yo ya me voy a morir a los desiertos me voy de elegido esa estrella marinera solo en pensar que ando lejos de mi tierra y no más que me acuerdo me da ganas de llorar pero a mí no me divierten los cigarros de la Dalia pero a mí no me consuelan esas copas de aguardiente solo en pensar que dejé un amor pendiente y no más que me acuerdo me dan ganas de llorar Capítulo 1 El viaje Chapter 1 The journey Me llamo Poncho María Julián Alicia Asmi Ernesto Osevio I'm 13 I'm 14 13 15 14 14 16 I'm from Honduras Salvador Guatemala Guatemala Honduras Mexico Here's what I see Wide open space Huh? Quiero una moto I want to be riding my motorcycle towards the mountains with nothing but space all around me and the long open road ahead Sol en mi espalda. Eso es lo que yo quiero. I want to be a teacher. The kind that kids look up at with this face. Mira, mira, mira. Quiero ser un doctor. A doctor who also does rap. To keep my patients happy. Yo quiero decidir mi vida. Sin que me diga lo que tengo que pensar o quién tengo que ser. In my village, I went as far as I could with my studies. I want more. I see myself. I decided my life would be without any interference. I see me doing the things I'm not allowed to do back home. Like, be an architect. I am going to build these really strong buildings that don't collapse during earthquakes. I want to be a businessman, <laughs> a rich one. I'm going to have secretaries, assistants, people who get me coffee and the newspaper, and drive me to important meetings. I'm going to have expensive cars, Lamborghini. <laughs> Everything the very best. I want to be left alone. Quiero ver a mi mamá. I, I want to see my mother in San Antonio. Y que lleguemos todos bien. May God watch over our journey and bless it with his blood. The train! The train! Fortune teller? 
she told me to, to come here. You know, she looks at me, you know, she holds my head, and says, tomorrow, tomorrow at night is when you'll be able to catch it, not before or after. The others had to pay her, but not me. She also gave me something to eat. La bestia muerde. Some nights the beast bites. It eats an arm. Oh, un pie. Or an ear. Or oh, la nariz. Or your pinky toe. Allá, arriba, hay que dormir amarrados. We ride tied together so we don't fall off. Yo voy a usar mi cinto. Yo no me voy a dormir. <laughs> because the clicas will come with machetes. Or guns. They just are robots. Or la migra. And they send you back to your country. And the police rob you. Or the cartels rob you. They rape you. Or kidnap you. Or te mata. Pues por lo pronto, me voy a amarrar con mi cinto. ¿Por qué se te caes? Ahí se acaba todo. La bestia.
Uh, it, it, it's dangerous because any one of these branches can knock you off to your death. I've seen it. Wish I hadn't. I've been doing this for about four years now. You know, we've received testimonies of people seeing their loved ones fall off and die because of these branches. So duck, all right? Have you seen many children alone, unaccompanied, riding these trains? There's been a surge in the past few years. They ride alone. I mean, those that you see that make it to the U.S. live through hell. You can't think about the odds or else you wouldn't be able to do it. You know how 40% will die as a result of murder or kidnappings? And those are the ones that never make it. They die on their way. And many, well, they try over and over again, determined to get across. This train is not free. You pay, believe me, you pay. Why are so many willing to do this? Well, to me, it's simple. They're living in extreme violence. In these countries, more than half the population want to leave. If these dangers won't keep people away, what will? Nothing. Until the situation changes in their home countries, people will risk their lives to get away. Thank you. The entire border is lined with a patchwork of steel and concrete fences, infrared cameras, sensors, drones, and nearly 20,000 U.S. Border Patrol agents. The chances these riders take are legion, but they are La 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 with drug cartels and corruption in general. There is a lot of histrionic ranting and raving about human rights. Remember, it is children who are being caught in this vitriolic crossfire. The parents are the responsible ones. If they want better opportunities for their kids, stand up and do something. The U.S. simply cannot accommodate the world's populations within our borders. Heck, we're not doing such a great job empowering our own homegrown poor. I'm sorry, but we cannot turn a blind eye to the desperation in other countries, especially when our nation's demands and actions have caused those problems. Our president has effectively promised children amnesty. This crisis is Obama-made. Look, these children do not appear to be malnourished or physically abused, and they do not appear to be afraid. They have heard from all their friends and relatives that if they get to the U.S., all will be taken care of. Except the, the American, American middle class, class are tapped out. Oh, they're brown with Hispanic-sounding names, therefore, what, not welcome anymore? This is not a refugee crisis. Some people want to make this a refugee crisis so that the U.S. is forced to take these children in and resettle them. The descendants of those that pass through the Golden Door are trying to shut it behind them. These children do not meet the definition of a refugee which require you to be fleeing persecution, war, or natural disaster. None of these things are true. Now listen, the foundation to this crisis are the markets in the U.S. for illegal drugs and the sale of guns 
to the armorers who supply the gangs with their weapons. Now, we can continue to treat the symptoms, but it would be better to implement a cure. Our war on drugs is responsible for crime and bloodshed in both Mexico and Central America. Do you remember the 80s when we funded mercenaries and sent our military into Central America? Look at most of the Hispanic population now in the US. They, for the most part, have not assimilated, and most have not become productive members of society. Want to destroy the drug cartels? Legalize all the drugs. Maybe. We need to train these children how to fight and provide weapons and return them to fend off the drug cartels. Maybe American military needs to intervene and wipe out the narcos in Mexico and Honduras. How do we convince American citizens that their drug use abuse causes death for not only them, foreign citizens, and our own military people? What about all the kids in the U.S. that face the same gang violence? I mean, where's the refugee status for those kids? I greatly oppose any statement that drug prohibition is fueling the problem. The underlying problems are the weak-willed who escape reality through drugs and the liberal elite who enable them. I'm talking to you, Hollywood! I cannot get past the story of the mother whose husband was murdered by drug dealers and she moved herself alone illegally to the U.S and left her kids back in Honduras. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. What kind of a mother does this? What kind of a person is so obsessed with coming illegally to the United States, undoubtedly to steal a job from a US citizen, that they would abandon their own kids? Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed, to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Many, if not most, guns used by those gangs are purchased in the U.S. Ha! When do a country's actions or policies rise to a level that they threaten U.S. security? We systematically destroy the local culture in many Central American countries in our search for cheap labor as well as for drugs. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan channeled $500 million to back the Salvadorian military and illegally sold weapons to Iran to fund the Contra fight against the Nicaraguan Sandinistas. To those who invoke the Statue of Liberty's offer of refuge to the poor and tired, please wake up to the modern American welfare state. Our nation simply cannot afford to allow failed Latin American economies to export their poverty to the United States. The CIA orchestrated an invasion into Guatemala in 1954. Soon after, civil war broke out, leading to 200,000 deaths. Why is this our problem? Why are all the world's problems always our problems? There are so many homeless children in our country. Why aren't they our problem? Why are there so many? What a total tragic mess with no easy solutions. Our country, why? Why? Why is it always our problem? Psst, psst. You, listen. Large corporations like the United Fruit Company, they steal from the poor and give to the rich. There's a nasty bit of karma playing out here, and we as a nation have sins to account for. We, we are, are not innocent. innocent here. Look, it's easy to make humanitarian gestures, especially if one is not paying a personal price. We yeah, have enough gang, gang problems of our own. In fact, gangs are our problem spawned on our streets in the 1980s and deported en masse in the 1990s. Mexico does not have to declare a crisis, even though those people pass right through that country and route here. Why? Because Mexico profits on the transit of illegals, but makes it absolutely clear that undocumented Central Americans will not be allowed to stay in Mexico. Come on, these children are our future doctors. I seriously doubt that many of these uneducated, illiterate, third world, Peasant children will be our future doctors and teachers. 100 years ago, you could do exactly what these children are doing today. Flee a horrible situation, arrive on our border, and come into the United States. It is at least as dangerous with all the gangs and drugs in East LA, where many of these children are going to end up anyway. 
This is economic immigration, illegal to steal our jobs. I am ashamed to be an American. Our Congress is regarding the whole issue of children from Central America fleeing across our southern border on political terms rather than humanitarian ones. Maybe you don't recall the rules that your immigrant ancestors used to come here legally. Actually, our immigration laws were changed in the 1920s by the people who did not like the millions of Jews and Italians that crowded into New York City. I mean, many of our ancestors would be turned away today. It is a real tragedy that many of the great-grandchildren of the Ellis Island immigrants who have contributed so much to America turn their back on the nation of immigrants that welcome their ancestors and attack these children, even as they eat bagels and pizza. What these children are doing is no different from what our ancestors did. New York Times. July 13th, 2014. Comments from Sonia Nassario's article, The Children of the Drug Wars, a refugee crisis, not an immigration crisis. Available. If 
do not screen the child for any additional needs and determine where to send him, her, based upon two considerations. One, juvenile criminal history determines least restrictive security setting possible, and two, bed space. Do you know anyone in this country? Verification is required. Fill this paper out, and this, and this, and this, and this, and... Do you have family here? Father, mother, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, cousin, family friend, no boyfriends or girlfriends. There are seven different types of ORR facilities but over 80% of them are simple shelters with little ability to cater to special needs. Step five. Inside the ORR facility. We need verification. What do you have there? And there, and there, and there, and there, and... Fill this form out. No, don't use that. This pen. The person you are released to must have papers. Do you have a sponsor? A criminal record? Have you completed the package? You will be evaluated. We will evaluate your sponsor. You'll be released only to the proper sponsor. The primary goal of the staff is to reunify the child, youth, with family. The children fill out the family reunification packet and begin the next stage in their process for entering the U.S. It can take anywhere from one week to almost a year, depending on the complexity and the history of the case. Most take three to six weeks, and over 80% of the youth will be reunified within the U.S. Less than 10% will be deported. Step six. Although many get to be released in the U.S., they all have open immigration cases. If they do not attend them, those without lawyers often do not. They will become undocumented and could be detained if coming in contact with law enforcement. At that point, they may enter all our facilities again or begin removal proceedings. Chapter 3, The Shelter. Ula! I am Ula. I am from Sudan. Now, the trick is to find a connection man, one that you can trust. You are putting your life in his hands, so this cannot be just anyone, man. Now, after searching for months, I found him. My family interviewed him very carefully, especially my mother. They paid him. It was the money my family has saved for many days. The connection man gave me a passport, a fake one. I am 17, put in the passport, I am 22. <laughs> I look older than 17. I flew from Sudan to Sao Paulo, Brazil. It, it then went by car across to uh, Venezuela. We crossed the Amazon River here. Yeah. An Amukonda slid right by me. That was one of the worst moments I had. They are 17 feet long. <laughs> Do you know that? That's big. <laughs> <laughs> I went from Caracas to the borders of Colombia. At each point, there were different connection men. I could always tell when a connection man I needed was me. They looked a certain way, you know? Very tired, but strong and with eyes. They seem to have eyes all around their head. In Colombia, I spent 13 hours on a boat. There were 20 of us, and I hate boats. We made it into Panama and spent two days there crossing the jungle. From Panama, we made it into Costa Rica, uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico all by car or bus or on foot. The, at times, I thought it would never end. So many of us just marching, just going and going through land and water, hot and humid, the leaves the size of cars. And aunt, 
that can kill you in 24 hours. At night, I would hang my shirt to dry on a branch, and in the morning, it would be more wet than before. <laughs> a very different, this land than mine. The many asked us what our destination was. We said, the U.S. <laughs> they let us go. They did not want us to stay. Connection, man, all along the way. All together, it cost my family uh, $15,000. In Tijuana, I could see the U.S. <laughs> it was a dream to be so close, to have traveled so far. In the guard post, it moved closer to me. I felt like I was floating. I, it was floating towards me. Everything my family hoped for, right there. And I stepped across into the United States. And I was still that same person, but I think I expected to turn into a prince at that moment. <laughs> It's something like that, something magical. That I turned myself into Border Patrol, and I told them I was 17. They, the, the, the officers, they, they questioned me and took me to the office of refugee and resettlement. It was all very serious for them. They all bored and serious. But I smiled. I was, I was so happy. <laughs> they found a shelter in San Diego that had a bed for me. I stayed there for weeks. I mean, young men like me, but I was the one who traveled at Polish. They couldn't believe it. They contacted my uncle, Jamal, who lives in Chicago. Uncle Jamal came to get me. I waited for my twin sister, Saha, who followed three weeks after I left. My uncle Jamal told me she drowned. Think you love me, yeah? My name? And the name Ulan, it means fast, born, swing. I carry on with me. Coyote got us to Reynosa and left us to fend for ourselves. He took everything we had. He walked. Carretera Nuevo Laredo Reynosa to Mariano Matamoros. That's where the Migra split us up. I lost him. I kept going. Right on to 16 de Septiembre. Carretera Camargo Ensenada, Camargo Olmos, Santa Cruz Ensenada, and finally to South Pete Diaz Avenue. Well, after over 15 hours of non-stop walking, I hid in a truck under a mound of earth with only a straw to help me breathe and entered into the United States. I crossed from Nogales to Arizona. I didn't see light for 16 days. <sighs> when they took us to shower, the sun came through the windows and it stung our eyes. This place is nicer than where I was last. <laughs> I cry all night. I'm used to it. One night, one of the teachers, well, we call them teachers, but they're like prison guards, not teachers. Oy, she said they that. They mess with us. One night, one of them came around and told us there'd been a huge earthquake in all of Central America. What? We cried all night. If they do that to me, I'll punch them. Oh, no, you won't. Soy de Honduras. I am from Puerta Cajuta, El Salvador. Chicago. Chicago, Guatemala. 
Aquí estamos. I can't believe that I'm here. I miss mis abuelos. I miss my mother and brothers. I'm going to see my mother for the first time since I was two. She's going to kiss my face off. <laughs> I don't know when I'll see mine again, but I'll find a way. I'll find a way to bring them. I miss my best friend, Julieta. And my family, of course. But you'll see. We'll be like sisters here, for a little while at least. How long will we be here before they come get us? It depends. Maybe a few days, maybe a month. I've never been outside my village. It's a small village by the water. One day, our mayor found a head, a severed head on his doorstep. <gasps> that was it. My mother packed my things the next day. I've seen worse than that. We get one call each day. One to our family back home and one to our family here in the U.S. Make sure you tell your family that you are eating well and being treated well. Make sure you say that. What do we do here? The social workers check on us. We play. We have lessons like to learn English. I learned how to be in an interview. <laughs> Some girls come and do games with us. They are nice. They go to college in the shelter. I like this one game where we list what we hope for the future and draw it. They say it is a life map. Has anyone, you know, hurt you? Not here, no. We're safe here. How do you know that? You have to have faith. We haven't been through all of this for nothing. God is watching over us. Not always. Cook looked at me. Does he sleep here? No, he doesn't, and he wouldn't hurt you. I saw something I can't stop thinking of. You have to leave it behind. Forget what you've seen. Look ahead. I know, but... No es fácil. This woman, she gave birth at the detention center. We were brought in together. She was very weak, and I helped her. She was so frightened. After she gave birth, they took her baby away. What do you mean? Who did? They can't do that? The guards. The father came and just took the baby. I was behind the glass of the detention room when it happened, so I couldn't reach her, but I saw it all. The father didn't even look at her. He just took the baby in his arms and walked away was a loaf of bread. How did you know it was the father? She told me earlier that her husband was coming to get her, but something must have happened. The night the baby was taken, I heard screams howling all night long. Then suddenly it was very quiet. We're here. We're here now. I come from one of the world's deadliest cities, San Pedro Sula Andores. It's like a war there. You can't walk in the street without feeling scared. Anything can happen. The gangs, they threatened me and my whole family. They ordered me to join and they told my family that they would kill all of us if I didn't obey. My friend, Julieta, well, she had the same problem as me, and she chose to join. I made her a promise. We promised each other that we'd both get jumped together. We were both so scared, and it was a way of getting through it like a team. But I left her. I never showed up. My family, they insisted that I leave. They quickly got the money together. It was all the money they had saved. And my relatives saved too. I couldn't let on that I was leaving. If anyone found out, well, then that would be it. It happened to my cousin, Jorge. They slit his throat at school because somebody let out that he was going to leave the gang. I had to keep quiet. We had to keep quiet, even to Julieta. to stay 
and just disobeyed my parents. A part of me wanted to go through with it, you know? To just, just be a part of something. I never saw Julieta before I left. I don't know what happened, if she's okay. And I know she hates me for what I did. And I do too. But I can never go back. If they send me back, well, then I'd be like my cousin, Jorge. I think protect me from that. No me importa. Soy Adrián. Soy Javier. Se me robaron otra vez, hijo de puta. Ok, class. Buenos días. <laughs> Grab your notebooks from your cubbies, please. ¿Qué? <laughs> A libros, por favor. Rapita. Oh, Hello. My name is. Hello. Hello. My, my name, name, my, my name is, is good now. Good now. <laughs> Javier, don't start. ¿Qué pasó? Todo en inglés. Por favor. How was lunch? Ah, estaba malísimo. Pues a mí me gustó. English boys. <laughs> Bad. Please. Good. Es que no me gusta cilantro. Aquí pone cilantro. Javier, en Javier. <laughs> Javier. English. Cilantro? <laughs> Cilantro, huh? Okay. Javier is the teacher. And Adrian, the student. This is the first class, Primera Clase, okay? Javier, come into your new class. Hello. What it What is? Hello. What is your name? Pero dinos tu nombre, huevón! Cuidado, Javier. You're next. Adrián. Yo voy, déjame. My name is Adrián. Good. Very good. And then you would say? Ah, no puedes, marica! Bueno, idiota, cállate. Stop, boys! Stop it. Adrián, you would say? I am new to this school. Excellent. Very good, Adrián, very good. Pues nadie te va a dejar entrar así. ¿Cómo Ian, I first met Adrian when he was 17 years old. He was living in a shelter in San Francisco. Adrian had left an abusive father, a crack addict mother, and survived on what little he sold from a stall in Guatemala City's colonial district. The stall, though, was shot at by gangs when he had refused to give them a cut. 
He had witnessed robberies, stabbings, shootings, and had had enough. So he took a bus to the Mexico-Guatemala city border. There he crossed the Suchiate River by inner tube. Then he stole a bike and pedaled to the city of Tapachula. He walked 150 miles north. 150 miles north, making sure not to go near La Rosetta. La Rosetta, that's the uh, scrubland known for migrant kidnappings and assaults, right? Yeah. I slept on the doorstep of a church, and I saw that the migrant shelter had burned to the ground. Do you have any gal? Think so? Ha. Sugar free? Really? Sorry. Uh, so, Adrian, what happened next? Well, in the town of Arriaga, I got on La Bestia. Look, hadn't you heard the horror stories? What, the people got their body parts sliced off? They slipped while trying to jump on the boxcars? Or fell off while sleeping? Yeah, yeah, I heard it, right? I mean, the stories about the guys to look out for. The people who climb on with machetes and guns. The kidnappers sent by the gangs. Oh, and the Mexican police. And none of that scared you. So invisible. Hmm. How long were you on the train? I rode into Guadalajara. Christmas night, I slept on the sidewalk. Got back on. Rode into Monterrey. Where they attacked me with a machete because I'm gay. Surprise? It's kind of hard to surprise me. But the uh, green nail polish was a clue. Kelly. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> Kelly Green nail polish. <clears throat> so you were attacked and... I ran. Right? I ran and ran and ran until my feet were bleeding. That was the worst. I, like for anything, shoes, food, clothes, I sold... Well, I sold whatever I could. I kept going. But I not Norte. North, to the border at Nuevo Laredo. Yeah, and when I couldn't get across, I moved backwards. Backwards? 450 miles south of San Luis Potosí, 200 miles west of Guadalajara oh. before heading another 1,000 miles. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What? Short, I mean, if one way's blocked, you go around and you find another. Right. I mean, what was I going to do? Just turn back? No, I, I, I'd come too far. I went north to the Sonora Desert, and then I made it. But they caught me right away. But at least the shooters didn't get me. Shooters? Yeah. You know, some on the US side try and shoot us while we're crossing. Some kind of game. They didn't get me, though. Because <laughs> you're invisible. See? <laughs> OK, OK. So Adrian, tell me what's Life like for you here. Kids at the shelter steal my stuff, all right? I hate them. Well, do you have any friends? I'm not here to make friends. All right, so what are you here for then? I don't know. So I'll be old enough to live on my own. School's boring and all, but I guess, you know, it has its moments. Hmm. Any plans after that? Mm, I want to go to cosmetology school. Good, good, that's good, Adrian. Um, just one last question I kind of have to ask. Adrian, what are those bruises that I see on your neck? <laughs> oh, Nino. <laughs> those aren't bruises. They're hickeys. <laughs> so this, this is what you came here for, the American dream. I'm not here for the American dream. I just, I just wanted to get far away. San Salvador, February 17, 1980. Dear President Carter, in the last few days, news has appeared in the national press that worries me greatly. According to the reports, your government is studying the possibility of economic and military support and assistance to the present government junta. The government junta, and especially the armed forces and security forces, have resorted to repressive violence 
producing a total of deaths and injuries much greater than under the previous military regime. The Junta and the Christian Democrats do not govern the country. That political power is in the hands of unscrupulous military officers who know only how to repress people and favor the interests of the Salvadoran oligarchy. I hope that your religious sentiments and your feelings for the defense of human rights will move you to accept my petition, thus avoiding greater bloodshed in this suffering country. Capitulo 4. Aquí. Chapter 4. Here. I don't know. I don't remember him. Bullshit. Who is your father? I've already said. Yes, yes. You've said a businessman, but that's a lie. We all know he's no businessman. Please, oh God, please listen. I really don't know why you're here or what you want. Who is your father? If you want money. We don't want your blood money. Listen, you've made a mistake. No, 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 we most certainly did <laughs> not. I'll give you anything you want. Who is he? Please. Who is your father? God, all right. Before he was a businessman, a general, he was once a general a very long time yes, ago. Yes, he was. A Salvadoran general. Is that all you wanted? Okay, so can I leave now? Archbishop Romero. Who was he? I don't know. I guess a martyr. <laughs> you know who killed him? Please, I'm an American. Salvadoran. I was born here. I don't know. You don't know or you don't want to know. That general, the one who ordered Romero's assassination, killed tens of thousands of innocent people. 75,000 people, Salvadorans, died in that war. What does that have to do with me? I hope that your religious sentiments and your feelings for the defense of human rights will move you to accept my petition, thus avoiding greater bloodshed in this suffering country. Thus avoiding greater bloodshed in this suffering country. On March 24th, 1980, one month after writing this letter, Romero is assassinated while giving mass. To this day, the person who gave the orders is walking free. As is the general who ordered the death of four American nuns. And the general who murdered 200 mostly women and children gathered peacefully in a plaza in San Salvador. And hundreds and thousands of others. And that's just El Salvador. I'm innocent. Not with that last name. You're saying that I'm responsible for some atrocity that I never knew about that my father committed? That's ridiculous. Ignorance does not excuse you from responsibility. That war happened before any of us were born. We're not responsible. Who is? Those people. Those killers. Get them, not me. I mean, why do you care so much? It was ages ago. We want you to publicly condemn your father and the crimes he committed. We want an apology. I am not my father. What those people did over 35 years ago has nothing to do with me. Who I am, what I do now, that letter was to Jimmy Carter. Why don't you hunt him down, torture him? What about the people who elected Jimmy Carter? Why don't you kill all of them? And Reagan's family, how about that? We want justice. Oh, that's what this is, this is justice. You can't decide to pass down crimes like this from one generation to another like this. I'm not him! turn my back on everything I've known? How can I do that? What are you going to do to me if I don't? Are you going to kill me? How different are you then? It wasn't me. I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Do something! Why don't you do something? You have all the answers. Muy seguro. Pues las cosas han cambiado. Okay, I, I thought he would be here. would help us. You said that he was the only one that we could trust, that he knew the way, that nothing could go wrong. We have all this way, and now? What do we do? We've been lied to. My mother's waiting for me. She's worried. She's... I can't go back. They'll kill me. I don't stand a chance out here. Oh, man. What are we going to do? How could I have been so stupid? He abandoned us here. Took what he needed and left us to die. No. Él está perdido en una tormenta. 
He refuses to follow rules or orders. He makes up his own rules and he gives orders. He's a fighter. He's a survivor. He's hungry. He's thirsty. He's poor. He's solo. He's cocky. He's a foreigner. He's a citizen. He's a lion. He's a serpiente. He's a snake. He's an ego. take his money, money that's meant for my comfort, for my school, for my protection. Nightmares I can't get away from, things I did, I hide. It's quiet and it's safe here, but I can't stay. The priest says that all will be forgiven, but is his kindness real? I can't stay. I have to run. I, I have to get away. The machete raised high above me, my mother screams, my baby sister crying. I ran. What kind of father would do that? I look behind me. He was always the better runner, but his scarf got caught on top of the wire fence. His eyes strained towards me. They hold me back. I, I can't help. We laugh at him swinging. Lifeless. Metió cantando en su auto. Varios roja. Tiros. A warehouse of metal and darkness, sweat pouring over me for long hours, being tossed around like a rag, no more. I'm 16, and I'm ready to take on the most terrifying adversary. I am ready to sacrifice myself for others. I know how to fight. I know how to persevere. I can take it. I can take anything. I am backed into a corner, caught between wars, fighting my way out. I raised myself up, all on my own. I am a seeker, atheist, Hungry, resilient, intelligent, generous, faithful. I am determined, anxious, religious, voracious. I am ahead of my time, ahead of my class, ahead of the pack, ready to gamble it all. So much we are unstoppable. We are leaders. We are tough. Tenemos vision. We are unbeatable. Somos el futuro. We are the future. Tenemos grandes sueños. 